Hello, everybody. So today on the beat, you know, we're all about our naturally oriented therapists and our medically enlightened doctors and specialists here on Not Meds. And on the beats, what we really attempt to do every single week is bring you a member of our tribe that will help you deeper understand your body and how it works. And this week on the beats, we have Dr. John from Florida, who has created a line of products, who has written a book, who has a clinic there in uh, Florida and Sarasota, who is doing something different with mitochondria, with getting the energy cells of the body to be stimulated and to help the body adapt to all forms of stress using an incredible miracle of a molecule that we've all heard about, that we've never used in this way. And so join us today for this incredibly interesting talk with Dr. John and all about melatonin and NAED. Join us as you get enlightened from this incredible tribe member and what he's doing in his clinic and helping so many others with true anti-aging and true bioregulatory medicine by upregulating the system and getting the parasympathetic system that we talk about so much here uh, to be the dominant system. Welcome to the Beats. Welcome back to The Beats, and I am so honored to have another incredible new tribe member of mine, Dr. John, who I met about a couple months ago, and we were with Dr. Pompa, who so many of you are knowing on this podcast and many others, but Dr. John has a very vast knowledge of many things that I want to know more about. Um, one in particular that we're going to talk about today, NAD, for those of you who have listened. But what Dr. John is really an expert at is the mitochondria. And so we're going to dive deep into a little bit of science today. Be prepared. I sat through his lecture and was like, oh, I hope everybody else is catching on to this because there's a lot. Um, and to that end, he has written a book, which we're going to talk about today too. But we're very honored to have Dr. John with us to talk about all things integrated functional medicine and what he's doing with the mitochondria down in his center and many other things. So very much pleased to have you here. And thank you so much for honoring us today with your presence, Dr. John. Oh, well, thanks for that great introduction, Kelly. And I was equally impressed at meeting you. I think we were in Dr. Dan's um, lower level is den. Mm -hmm. And uh, just you're, you, you have such a great body of knowledge as well. So it was nice to kind of talk shop with you. Yes, I agreed. And he has some products that he was talking about that I was like, ooh, ooh I need to know more about these products. So before we do that, let's back up a little bit. How did you get to where you are? You're a chiropractor, you're a natural path. Tell us a little bit about your story and how you ended up. You're in the Florida area for those that are listening, Sarasota, just below Tampa. So where, how did you get to where you are? Well, you know, it, I kind of stumbled on it. Um, I initially got into a car accident and that kind of got me in the direction of uh, becoming a chiropractor. And um, after graduating from chiropractic school, I, um, I really appreciated chiropractic and all the things that um, chiropractic could uh, accomplish. And I was also really interested in treating chronic diseases. And I could see that there was a lot of um, things that could be done in the, in the world of intravenous therapy with ozone and high dose vitamin C. And you know, we were really interested in something called prolotherapy and it's the early days of regenerative injection therapy. And so I went back to school and uh, became a naturopath. And so we've kind of enjoyed an integrative approach. And, um, you know, along the way, I, I got really ill. And so my test uh, for, um, I guess, staying, um, the course as far as staying natural and trying to get yourself better in the, in, in the wake of being very, very ill with no answers for many, many years. Um, it was very frustrating because I was all, I, I had a practice where I would have people coming in from out of the area, even back then. And, um, and I was supposed to have all the answers and I was so ill that I literally remember Kelly sitting on a park bench at a park, walking somewhat, watching somebody walk by, and, and I was thinking how nice that would be to just walk normal. That's how much pain I had in my, uh, my lower spine and pelvis. And so um, I eventually found out I had Lyme disease and mold illness and off the chart Ep Epstein-Barr virus. And 
probably a lot of your listeners can um, understand this journey, right? 100%. I think there's a lot of us out there that are more and more start starting to realize that this is at the root of a lot of chronic illnesses, really. It's toxicity and um, infections, in my opinion, are at the root cause of virtually all diseases. And John, Dr. John, me, me, you deserve all that credit. So let me not comment that we're just a little friendly. So I was going to call him that, but I have to give you a lot of credit because I know what you said may have skipped over a lot of people listening, but it does not skip over me. You know, in our industry, we have a lot of people that on a superficial level say all the right things, but when they're challenged, when they're pressured, all of a sudden they fold and they go the other way. So this wonderful medicine that they give so much credit to that is helping hundreds of people that are walking in and out of their clinics, when it comes time for them to treat themselves, I find a lot of, of the colleagues that maybe aren't as pure as you and I are, uh, tend to go, well, I'm going to go have surgery on that, or I'm going to go do this, or I'm going to, and it always blows my mind in all honesty. And mm -hmm. I give you a lot of credit because that's a challenge. When you have everybody else you're fixing, it's hard for you to find practitioners that really understand and are willing to dive deep and dig deep to get to the root cause. And at the other end though, is an incredible practitioner that's even more committed, more devoted, more in alignment with what they're doing, the whole live it to lead it thing that Dr. Pompa teaches. I say whole live it to lead it like it's a, a colloquial term, but the reality is that is what this medicine is all about. You know, I mean, one of the things that impressed me about John was how young he looks and feels and acts. And he's not as young as he would look and act and feel. And I think we had that in common that we've both been doing this medicine for a very long time and we really truly live it. And we the minute I was like, hey, you want to try this? He's like, sure, I'm up for it. And the minute he says something to me, like, you want to try that? I'm like, sure, I'm up for it. Because mm -hmm. we know that we can't experience anything that if we haven't experienced it within ourselves, how can we ask our clients to do that? You know, number mm -hmm. one. So, so you got to the point where, okay, this is making sense. Now, now tell us how you got better. How did you get better through that line story? And I'm going to go grab my power cord while you do that. Okay. Well, you know, it was... Um... I, I, one of the trips I made was to Germany and I went out there for about five weeks and I treated with a, a German doctor and somehow I, I, I found him online as being like, you know, the expert. And um, I'm not going to mention his name or anything because honestly, I didn't really get a lot of benefit. Um, but it did, um, it did allow me to just kind of take a break for five weeks. Um, I went out there, I stayed, I think I stayed in a moldy apartment, which is probably why I didn't get better. Um, but uh, I really enjoyed traveling and checking out all the castles out there in Germany. So that was at least one benefit. Um, so I've gone through, I've gone through a lot of traveling and I, I went and treated in, uh, in uh, Switzerland at peristalsis. And, um, and, you know, a lot of this stuff, honestly, there was little bits and pieces that helped, but nothing really worked for me. And it wasn't until, um, and I, I would have, you know, glimmers of, of feeling better. Like, you know, there was a few times where I had antibiotics and I thought I was like, okay, this is it. And it's the same story I hear from all of my patients is the antibiotics help for a short period of time. And then they kind of relapse. And I don't know anybody um, that's really been cured long-term with antibiotics because it's so um, damaging to your microbiome. So um, for me, it was really a combination of cleaning my home up. Um, that was probably one of the biggest thing is getting into a clean home, breathing clean air, getting out of the mold. Um, high dose melatonin was something else that I think we should dive into on, on the, uh, in our discussions, but that was something that was really helpful kind of more in the, the, the tail end because I didn't discover the high dose melatonin until later on. Ozone was hugely beneficial. Um, I found uh, fasting early. When I first actually got sick, I, I was doing these uh, three, five, and one week fast. And it was one of the few things that really calmed the inflammation down for me. Um, and yeah. ozone, when you yeah. speak of ozone, you mean IV ozone? Intravenous ozone, yeah. Okay, mm -hmm. just double checking. Okay. Yeah, some of the IVs that were really helpful me, for me early on were high dose vitamin C. Um, I was using colloidal silver intravenously. There's a type of silver called argentin 
and um, the company is actually based uh, just down the road from me. Um, huh. And Seth Quinto, they're one of the large. So they make solvents, solvent silver as well. And so there's a technique where you can do this slow drip with this Argentan silver, and it's it's really phenomenal. So we'll um, occasionally use that in combination with ozone with some of our our infection patients and so with some pretty amazing results. And so I love what you said because, well, I don't love it, but it's the truth of what some people have experienced. Like, oh, they're, they feel like they're kind of on the right path, but they're not quite getting all the results that they wanted. They see glimmers. And I think honestly, for those listening too, that's often when they want to give up. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And why didn't you give up? Well, I, I, I probably did multiple times and then I picked myself up by the bootstraps and, you know, the next day, but uh, yeah, you know, it, like you said, it's it, when you're a practitioner and you're supposed to have all the answers, it makes it even more difficult when you see your health. I mean, I weigh right now, I weigh about 170 and before I got sick, I weighed about 190. I was doing bodybuilding and I went all the way down to 145. So I was literally just emaciated. And yeah. most of the people around me thought that it was, um, I, I was abusing drugs, you know, because you're so grumpy, you know, you're irritable, you have so much inflammation. And it does appear from a, probably a lot of people's perspective that um, it's hard to kind of define that, you know. Um, and you lose a lot of relationships, you know, it's, the depression, the anxiety, you know, it's just a whole perfect storm, really. Mm -hmm. And when did that, when was all that happening? Like how many years ago did that happen for you? So it started for me in about um, 2007, 2008. Okay. And, and so when... in conjunction with this, we had the economic and I lost, you know, all my real estate. So there was a an economic, the, the practice kind of slowed down, uh, the health. So it was like this perfect storm for me. And when, when would you say that you feel like you're out of that at this point? Because you're out of that at this point, correct? I mean, I, I would say about five years ago. Yeah, five years ago. And that's really when I, I really like 11 figured out how to clean out the, you know, I started, what's that? So it took, it took more than five years for you to really get well. Oh yeah. Seven to 12, even more than that. Like 2008. So yeah, it was, you know, about 15 or so years. Right. right. Yeah. And that's important for people to understand, even as a practitioner, even with all the skill set and all the knowledge that he has, mm -hmm. it still takes years. We don't get sick overnight. We don't get well overnight. And would you say that you're better now than you were even five years ago? Oh yeah. So I, you know, we, I, I started using, I still had some neurological problems and um, my memory, my word finding, I just felt like that really didn't turn around. And, um, and I still had a little bit of fatigue, but what's really interesting, Kelly, is not only do I feel like I have that back, but I feel like my brain works better than it did when my, I was in my twenties. Um, just the uh, neuroplasticity, you know, and I, I owe a lot of that, you know, I think NADs played a big role with that. I think um, the high dose melatonin, you know, I, I don't think that that word and that story has gotten out. So I wrote a book about it. Um, it's called Melatonin Miracle Molecule. You can find that at um, melatoninbook.com. And we'll give you a coupon code uh, to download the book as well. I think, what did we come up with? The Beats? The Beats. Yep, that's the code. The beats. Yeah. So if you want to read that book, we have um, a number of chapters and we really kind of break it down for various um, organs like neuro neurological, cardiovascular, digestion, digestion and gut, autoimmune, cancer, sleep, um, liver, um, uh, autism and kids. There's actually a, a, a lot of interesting um, applications with using higher doses of melatonin than what, so we're, we're typically, we're dosing people 100, 200 plus milligrams versus what is, you know, for people that aren't kind of um, understanding how much that is, it, it's not uncommon for people to take three milligrams. Right. So we're talking about massive doses of melatonin and, and I get a lot of people, you know, the most common, um, 
kind of feedback people will say is they think it's dangerous because you're going to shut down your own production. And out of all the hormones in the body, melatonin is one of the only that does not have a negative feedback loop. You produce melatonin based on light shining on your, in your eye, on your retina, it stimulates through something called the suprachiasmic nucleus, and it stimulates the pineal to store melatonin. And if you take melatonin, it doesn't change that at all. You'll still produce just as much. But if you look at a graph, Kelly, as you get older, especially after you hit 40, people just really aren't producing much melatonin at all. Um, and the brain doesn't really produce a lot. So when you, when you have a conversation about melatonin for sleep, um, neurologically for sleep, um, it, it's not really, there's not a lot needed. So when we start talking about using melatonin for other things and the benefit for melatonin to help buffer stress, that's why we start reaching for the higher doses because it starts to move the needle on all the cells in your body. That's key. That's a key distinction there because I know, I, I mean, y'all have to understand, I have a lot of questions for Dr. John on the melatonin dosages because when he was in front of the stage, I was like, what is he talking about? 200 milligrams what is he nuts like mm -hmm. aren't people like dumping parasites from their brains with that kind of activity and why would you do that i mean are they able to even be awake during the day if he's giving them that i don't know enough about the molecule it's it's like he said in his book it's a miracle molecule and i think the one thing that science can offer us these days is we know very little about much <laughs> we know very mm -hmm. little about much of anything True. and you know, the mystery of how the human body really works and the ecosystem of which it is, is a beautiful orchestra of continually adapting for all of life. And I say this all the time in my seminars about lymphatics is that we have never had an orgas organism up against what it's up against now. Never. Or an orgasm either. Or an orgasm. Yeah, I know. It's funny that it went there, but yeah, we, and if you have more orgasms, your organism will be much happier. That being said, everybody's <laughs> used to that on my podcast, um, but the organism is really up against so much stress, mm -hmm. not just emotional, but physical and etherical stress that I don't, I mean, I know in order for us to evolve, we need challenge. Right. Right. The level yeah. of challenge, however, that we are up against as an organism, if you've not been living this way as long as we have for 20 years, I can see why everybody's stressed dealing with coronavirus because they don't know enough how their body works. Absolutely. Yeah. You know, I, I, I loved um, when we spoke together um, in, uh, in, in Utah, you know, we, we were on the stage separately, but the, the, the gist was really we we're talking about hormesis, right? Yes. And so we talked about how stresses can be good and they can be bad. And the, the term for that, for a good stress is hormetic stress. Like you go into a sauna and it's hot, right? But that heat, as long as it's not too hot for too long, actually has this much, this net gain in health. And so when I look at that, I, I, I think about melatonin because the early research on melatonin when they were looking at rodent model, uh, models, they, they didn't find anything that melatonin was helping. So they were like, basically these mice were kind of like living at the Ritz Carlton, right? There was no stress. And they're, look, they're like, say, well, you know, the difference between the placebo and the, the, the rodents that aren't getting the melatonin or the ones that were and that weren't, there's, not, there's nothing different. And so when they went back to test it, they, they did a test where they stressed the, the one group of mice where they would put them in a tube with little pinholes. And this is how they stress these animals. And they let them sit in this tube for several hours a day. And this stimulates um, significant stress for that animal. And that's when the power of melatonin really surfaced. They found that the, the, the mice had less diabetes. They had less um, all-cause mortality. They live longer, like 30% longer. And so that began this massive body of research that anybody can pick up the computer and look at. And melatonin works on allowing us to handle stress. So if we want to deal with stress more effectively, or we want to use things that are like hormetic stressors like exercise or 
heat or cold or, you know, a lot of the different things that we use here in the clinic are stressors. And they're done in just the precise way that stimulates the body to, hey, recognize that it needs to be stronger in this area. And if you use melatonin, it's going to assist in every one of those. So it's an adaptogen. Not just for sleep. It's an adaptogen of all sorts. It's it the helps. ultimate adaptogen. Ultimate adaptogen. And I'll tell you why. So I, I don't want to get too in the weeds and too technical because I, when I start talking and telling this story, <laughs> I see people glaze over a little bit. I start talking about Krebs cycle and the mitochondria. Yeah, I was one of those people. And I love the Krebs cycle and hate it all at the same time. Well, so it's a necessary evil to understand it really to some yeah. basic degree, but let's, so we make energy through taking oxygen and glucose that's brought into the cell. And there's a, a P, there's little round um, uh, organelles called mitochondria. And this is where the energy is made. And all of us, you know, without that mitochondria, we would die. And so within that mitochondria, melatonin is made. Every single mitochondria uses melatonin when it's under stress to support itself. And what that stress looks like is oxidation. And so if I were to burn wood, I will get smoke. So it's the same thing. I'm burning glucose and oxygen and the smoke is oxidation and that oxidation needs to be neutralized. Now, what's, so, yeah. Can we just summarize that for those that aren't yeah. technical in science, that is beautiful. So the inside of a cell, which it, the red blood cells is what we're talking about. Okay, inside a cell, there's an there's a battery that gives it its energy and that's known as the mitochondria. It's, it's called an organelle because it's a little part of it. So a microcosm and a macrocosm. Our body is one big body full of organs and a cell is one big body full of organs. And one of those organs is the mitochondria and the mitochondria is the energy source. And the energy uses glucose, better known as sugar. Yes, all sugar is not created equal. There is glucose that we all need, can't live without glucose. Um, it takes glucose and oxygen to create that battery, to create that energy source. And as a byproduct, it, it burns off smoke, which is better known as oxidative stress. And the mm -hmm. oxidative stress is the byproduct that's bad that we don't want. And melatonin neutralizes that. It takes that stress away from the body burning energy. Correct? Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. It's the primary buffer that the cells particularly the mitochondria used to neutralize oxidation. So this is why, um, this is why uh, melatonin calms down the cytokine storm with infections, including the, the viral infection that you know, we're all dealing with right now. Um, so cytokines are infl inflammation and cytokines are the result of stress. So if you work out too much, you have too much heat, you have too much cold, you have too much toxins, you have too much infections. All of these stressors are gonna re result in a cytokine, which is certain types of inflammatory um, substances. Those cytokines, when they, when they overwhelm a cell, they don't allow the cell to make energy efficiently. And this is one of the reasons people wind up dying of COVID because that cytokine storm causes your immune cells to only make about 10% of the energy that they would normally otherwise make. Therefore, they can't go out there and fight the battle anymore. And then it just gets, it basically snowballs. And so if you give exogenous melatonin, meaning if you take melatonin via oral or rectal route or um, uh, liposomal, it actually restarts that production of melatonin in the mitochondria. So not only if your mitochondria gets overwhelmed, um, you can actually give melatonin and not only will the melatonin quench the oxidation, but it'll actually kickstart the production again. And you can see actually um, there's diagrams online that you can find and you can actually see the diagram of where melatonin kicks in and actually comes to the rescue with this stress. So it's like literally at the core of the core of the core. Yeah. So it's just, it's such an important molecule that needs, it should be on the news. 
Yeah. They should, people like, should be on the top of mountains crying out. It's like the redox control. potential in a SIA. Like it's just like people don't really understand the benefits of the redox potential and what that can give you, but it's the life force. And it's, and it, I mean, I'm sitting here going, okay, when, when am I getting my melatonin 200 milligrams? I'm ready. Let's go, baby. We'll I'm get ready. it in the mail tomorrow. We'll ship I'm it out ready. right away. I'm so in because you know so here's a question personal i never have done this on a podcast but i i listen to so many other podcasts and they're always like well, what about me well what about me and i'm like dude i am so handled i don't have symptoms blah, blah. but i would say that there's and i just talked about this on a podcast the other day i've never been a huge sleeper my whole life like five six hours is sufficient for me every mm -hmm. once in a while i get nine to ten um i vastly at a very high energy you spent the weekend with me La, 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 la. I go mm. crazy, like crazy all the time. So I feel like I deal with stress very well. My live blood's better. Like, you know, and I want to make this point too. One of the greatest things about this medicine is just this. You want anti-aging? Welcome to biological medicine because this is the real deal. Like you get live, more alive, more vibrant, more vigor, more passion, more devotion, as I age, I feel younger, more flexible in every single way. And mm -hmm. that is a beautiful thing. Mm -hmm. That being said, I'm like, okay, this is the one thing that everybody in my life complains about when they spend time with me, whether they're down in South Carolina with me, they're like, do you ever sleep or eat? I'm like, not much of either one. No, I live a lot, but I don't sleep or eat. So from your perspective, melatonin master, <laughs> so I'm going to call you now the melatonin master, is that a problem for me? Well, you know, I think, I think seven hours should be the minimum that you should. Um, so you, what you're saying is that you feel vital, you know, you feel like after that amount of sleep, you feel refreshed. There's other things that happen when you're sleeping that you might be missing out on. Right. So um, that's why they, they really suggest, you know, you look at, you look at, um, Ronald Reagan, um, he was trying Margaret Thatcher and Ronald Reagan, right? These two icons both had the same narrative. They don't need as much sleep. They can, they can accomplish everything. They they're more effect, effective or efficient with their sleep. I think they both slept under five hours, but ultimately both of them fell uh, victim of Alzheimer's. And so you start looking at some of the benefit of something called the glymphatic system, right? And like maybe I should know about that given that I'm the lymph queen, like maybe. Uh-huh. Yeah. yeah. So, so there's a lot of things that we know and there's a lot of things that we don't know. And so, um, you know, I, I, it, it'd be interesting to see what, what happens with some of the high, like the Sandman. So, uh, we have it in both the suppository and a liposomal to work up to a couple hundred milligrams and see what happens with your sleep. Do you track it with a, like a ring or? No, I'm adamantly opposed to um, bar rings and stuff. Just oh, okay. Like, All right. I'm the okay. one out there that's like, nope, nope, won't wear it. Like when I sleep, I want to sleep. Like that's it. I, I don't want anything tracking me or anything else because I feel like your body, I just, I know that your body responds to everything. So I don't want yeah. it to respond to anything other than the closed curtains and me going to sleep. Right. That being said, Makes sense. I've used an adaptogen my entire life of some sort, you know, Right. And I'm happy and open to say that 90% of the time in my life, it's been marijuana. And uh -huh. if I don't have a little marijuana every now and then, I feel like I'm going to spin off of this universe because I am vacillating so fast and furiously. And, sure. you know, I, I would love to have something that's not marijuana. That is, you know, melatonin, for instance, like I know I need an adaptogen. I, I use nutmeg as an adaptogen. I, the well, amount what, I we, carry nutmeg around with me in case I have tea so I can put nutmeg on it. We like, have we have 20 milligrams of a full spectrum um, hemp in the Sandman. So it's it's the best of both worlds. But you know, are are you talking about like some a little bit of THC or C B D or like what oh I'm what a full spectrum gal. I'm all about the THC. I, I don't like okay. to separate out what nature has given us. Have you tried Delta 8 THC by any chance? I just heard about it the other day. I literally just heard about it literally two days ago from one of my practitioners. So I'm going to try cool. it. Well, but we, I, just, we, I'm just started, we just started carrying a uh, Delta 8 tincture, full spectrum. Um, it's, it's interesting. It's clearer than the Delta 9. So just for people that are watching this, Delta 8 is, um, it's legal. 
right. but it is psychoactive. Um, it seems to, the research seems to be better for sleep, better for anxiety, better for pain. Um, overall seems to be a, you know, a better option. You do feel high when you take it, very similar to a regular THC, but it's not as, it's not as heady. Uh, you're, you're, you're a little bit clearer. So we'll, have, we'll, we'll include a bottle of that in your shipment. I'm excited. I mean, I'm also doing another four month protocol right now that I just started, which I haven't taken pills in so long. Like I'm a liquid girl and I I'm all about minerals and that's all I pretty much need, but I'm doing some research with some, with some other product clients to figure out what they're actually doing before I put my clients on them. Mm -hmm. But as everybody knows, it listens, like I am the first person. And, and what I know is that if I could find something that was better for me, that mm -hmm. was adaptogen that I know I need an adaptogen of some sort, because, you know, honestly, I don't really get high. I just like, zoom, like, okay, I can calm down a little bit. And meditation does it for me too. Breath work does it for me too. I have a lot of ways that I adapt into that, mm -hmm. but I know all of it, whether it's being on my flow prezzo, it's all a learned skill for me to relax. I am mm -hmm. not a relaxed person in general. It's a learned skill. And I know that that's not a healthy way to be because I agree you're like burning the candle at both ends and that's not good for your brain power because you need that sleep you need to drain the brain you need the glymphatics to, to dump out the toxic load and sleep is one of the only times you do that or relaxation. Well, what you're talking about, Kelly, is you're talking about the autonomics right the sympathetic right. versus parasympathetic and what you're talking about is, I think to some degree, a problem with almost everybody, because it's not, we, we're not a society of people that um, are suffering from too much um, parasympathetic, right? So it's that, that resting and digesting. We're a society that's suffering from too much sympathetic dominance. So we're stressed out, we're, we're, we're working, we're accomplishing, we're, um, we're, we're, we're being activated in so many different ways where our sympathetics, that fight or flight or hide mechanism is being um, overly active. And so it's just like when you exercise something, it gets stronger. And when something gets stronger in your body, the opposite gets weaker, right? In the mus muscular system, they call it reciprocal inhibition. If my bicep gets strong, the tricep gets weaker. So the more you are activating your sympathetic nervous system, you're going to be um, causing the parasympathetic to be weaker. And, um, you know, one of the most powerful um, activators of the parasympathetic nervous system is yours truly, melatonin. Mm -hmm. And in fact, we know this because um, heart rate variability, you know, I, I didn't really own heart rate variability at one point. It, it, it kind of was almost daunting because it's like, you know, what is that really telling me? And so I finally really dug into it. And what I found is that the heart is controlled by the sympathetic and the parasympathetic nervous system. And so the sympathetic is going to be causing the heart to beat faster and harder. The parasympathetic is going to be causing the heart to beat slower and more controlled. And so when you have a varied ability with the heart, it means that the sympathetics jumping in a little bit and the parasympathetics jumping in a little bit. So you kind of have both sides of the autonomic that are working. But what happens is people become dominant with their stress response, which is the fight or flight or the sympathetic. So there's a consistency. There's no variability with the heart rate. So really people aren't having heart rate variability problems because there's too much para parasympathetic. That's not happening. And so they look at heart rate variability as being a huge indicator for longevity and health in general. Your, your, your autonomics, your digesting, your cardiovascular system, your mental, um, emotional well being, your neurological health. And so, what, what melatonin does is it goes in there and it supports the parasympathetic nervous system. And I've seen my heart rate variability go up dramatically. In fact, I had um, um, Peter Martoni, our good friend mutual friend, right? He's like the pillow guy, the, not neck my pillow, nest. but the not neck call nest. it a pillow. It's a neck nest. <laughs> it's not a pillow. I, I stood up for you, Dr. Martoni. No, no. He, he it's a great pillow, by the way, I'm going to give him a shout out. Um, Necknest.com. Check it out. Um, but he was looking at my aura ring scores and he could not believe some of my scores were in the 70s and 80s at 51 years old. You know, it's unheard of, you know? So 
the lower the score, the less variability, right? So um, I, I just think that, that, that melatonin can help in so many ways. And because it works on the, the more variability, you mean the lower, the number, the more variability. No, the lower, the number, the lower, the variability. Oh, so low numbers. You want a higher score. score. I, I don't know the aura ring readings. I do heart rate variability all the time, but I don't know aura ring. So what's, what's like an average score? 20, 50, cause yours was 70, you said? Yeah, well, you know, it depends on your age. So there's okay. a graph and the, the younger you are, you know, the higher that variability in it. If you look, what's interesting is if you look at graph of melatonin over age, it looks very similar to this heart rate variability graph. Yeah. Well, I mean, I, I, listen, I test everything on heart rate variability. Why I don't do an R ring, I definitely, and, and I say all the time, if everybody has a good of a heart rate variability as myself and my husband, we wouldn't have a clinic. And that would be okay. I have plenty of other things to do, but we have a very good heart rate variability and mine has increased drastically over those years, drastically. And I love watching it because I'm like, oh, look at me getting chronologically older and biologically younger. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. And, yeah. you know, I, I, I just tested it the other day before I did this protocol and it was stellar, like, mm. you know, really, really good. That being said, I'm always looking to optimize. So if I can optimize some way, somehow I'm in. Because I think there's so much, like I said earlier, there's so much we can't know that we don't know yet and that we're just beginning to understand. And we're all lab rats in this experiment mm. called life. It's a matter of which lab experiment you're signing up for. And I personally want to look at the person who and the results that they have mm -hmm. because I can only get the results of what somebody has if they're giving me advice. And, you know, he, how old are you? 42, 52? I can't tell 51, 51. Okay. There you go. 51. But I, I don't see it. I mean, my husband's 62. I don't see either one of them any older than in their early, early forties. And mostly that's because they have gray hair on their faces. Other than mm -hmm. that, I wouldn't be able to tell their ages, not from their skin tone, not from their vitality, not from their acuity of their brain, not from their muscle tone, none of the indicators. And I was just listening to somebody else today that wrote a book, her like, 35th book or something on longevity mm. and you know longevity is something to be honored and respected and we should not be looking at oh those are the signs of old age that's insanity to people like us we're like oh you're one of those that like think you're gonna get older and feel worse no you you're wiser and and brighter and smarter and you should know more to learn how to achieve levels of vitality they're well surpassed any of our counterparts of any other organism that's ever been able to live on this planet we have that capacity with us with these biohacks so Absolutely. i want to talk about nad too but i i love what we went through with melatonin with the mitochondria and i think that you know by people being able to go to your website one is the melatoninbook.com we all need to read the book we need to understand it we need to ask dr john to come back on so we can ask him a thousand one questions after we've read his book because i'm sure i'll have some you'll get the the code of the beats which will allow you a discount in getting the book and then um i want to talk about nad so NAD is this new fad, IVs, and people are taking it orally as well. Number one, what is NAD, Dr. John? Can we talk about that? So it stands for nicotinamide adenine dinucleotide. And <laughs> just so rolls right off your tongue, doesn't it? It does. It does. I've said it like a thousand times. That's why. <laughs> Practice makes perfect. It does. Um, so okay. it's, it's a sister molecule to niacin. Okay. And, um, and so uh, niacin is a B vitamin. And so um, it's, it's, it's a rate limiting substance in uh, energy production in the mitochondria. So since we already covered that, people now know what a mitochondria are and right. they know what it does. It makes energy. And so through that process of making energy, it converts NAD to NAD, NADPH. And so when you start running low in the NAD, you aren't able to make as much energy. So um, there are certain things that deplete our NAD level, which makes our mitochondria unable to produce the energy that it could otherwise produce. Some of the primary culprits are uh, poor sleep and uh, drug and alcohol use. Those are the top, the top ones, but really any stressor can do it. Age is also 
uh, having birthdays is 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 also a um, a headwind to NA, NAD. <laughs> so, so we can replenish NAD levels, and we can do that with straight NAD. But you can't eat NAD or take it in a pill because it it doesn't pass the gut. So um, you can go and do expensive IVs. Um, in fact, you can come to our clinic and spend up to fifteen hundred dollars and sit here for five to eight hours and do an NAD IV. Um, or we have it in a suppository. Um, and so you can place a suppository in rectally. You don't even know it's there. And it's a slow bleed into the system, almost the same level as the IV is over the course of five hours. And that can cost 20 bucks. Um, we also have um, NAD, NAD max in a liposomal, which is, which is really excellent. And so um, NAD, you want to think about NAD as something that's going to allow you to produce um, better energy levels. So it's kind of like the material that the mitochondria needs to be able to burn the glucose and the oxygen. It needs NA NAD to do that. And NAD converts to NADPH. What's NADPH, might I ask? It's the reduced form of NAD. So it goes through From this- bioavailable? Yeah, right. Okay. And it's a sister to niacin, which is a B vitamin. What does that mean? It's a sister, like it's molecularly similar. It's similar. Mm -hmm. Okay. So how do people get naturally occurring NAD? Well, there's certain foods that support NAD. Um, okay. There's, um, you know, I think a lot of the things that we do that we consider being healthier lifestyles and diets are going to support NAD. So there's not just, there's the um, recycling of NAD, right? So that can be efficient or non-efficient. And then there's getting, there's NAD that we get from our diet. Okay. So there's NAD we get, and then there's NAD that we don't lose. So then there's going to be a balance between those two, which is going to determine how much you're losing every year. I can't imagine living in today's world and not having loss, like a normal loss of NAD. So supplementing NAD, also supplementing NAD should not be something that's done every single day. Um, there's plenty of companies that will suggest that you take it on a daily basis, but NAD actually supports a nasty cell called a, a senescent cell. And these are cells that we clear out when we're fasting. And that's why when I formulated the, the MitoFast um, protocol, which is a fasting protocol where you, um, you load up with NAD prior to the fast, and then you take substances that activate more autophagy, they clear up more senescent cells. Um, it might be a little bit much for us to kind of get too much into this stuff, because I know that you know we could be talking for hours and hours, but there's an article that we can link to in the show notes where we really get into this mitofast and we talk, we talk about how you can supercharge fasting and what senescent cells are, why they're so inflammatory or damaging and why you might want to actually uh, work to clear those out. And so you, you support these cells that you want to get rid of when you take NAD. So you don't want to take it all the time, especially when you're fasting. It's not a good time to take NAD. So I recommend people take NAD you know, anywhere from two to three or four times a week. And I love that variability because I think that the body is a circadian rhythm organism. It's not a, I do the same thing every day. We got to start to feel what our body needs, hone into that and allow our body to be change and variable. Just as he said about the heart rate variability, we don't our body doesn't require the same food. Oh, look at the little doggy. And if you get one of these, it'll save your NAD levels. <laughs> I totally agree. We just got a puppy as well. What kind of dog is that? She's an Australian Shepherd. She's really you have something cute. to say, Lonnie? She's really cute. <laughs> All the dog lovers just went, oh, because every once in a while our dog gets in on the camera too. It's lovely. Yeah, I had to do it. Um, no, it's wonderful because oxytocin, listen, he just got a little bit of oxytocin head, a little love, a little good hormone. And that's what melatonin is, is the good hormones. And we have, as John said, Dr. John said, you know, 
unfortunately right now in our society, we do not have an overload of parasympathetic tone. We have more of a load of sympathetic tone. It's why I do what I do to get people to help them to get into the parasympathetic. It's why I like Dr. Martoni, because I think we have a perfect simpatico experience of like, help them get into the flow prezzo, put their neck in the right position, help them sleep better. And then Dr. John's going to come in with all the melatonin. He's going to say you can do it in an IV and it'll cost you 1500 bucks over five hours. You're going to feel it a lot, right? My understanding is when you get NAD, it's a, an experience. Yeah. It, it, yeah. People Did you see feel kind of like a nausea, heaviness, oh. chest. Yeah. It's, it's not pleasant for a lot of people. Yeah. And getting in the suppository form while the entry is a bit, it's an emotional thing for us in this country, in all honesty. In Europe, it's done constantly. That's one of the things Dr. John and I talked about. You know, when I first got involved in this medicine, everybody's like, oh, just doing a suppository. And I was like, what do you want the Americans to do? Because they're not going to do that. But it's really a great entry form up your nose, up your butt. Like, just get over it because it's a great way for our bodies to get information and get homeopathics or nutritionals deep into the system and so nad and the suppository is 20 bucks do that well, a couple by the suppository bypasses the first pass to the liver it bypasses all the digestive acids in the stomach and it also allows for a slow bleed into the bloodstream over the course of hours and so there's a huge benefit for people that really want to really absorb nutrients like at a cellular level. Mm -hmm. And so when you talk about melatonin, it's only two and a half percent absorbed orally. So when you start talking about these higher doses, you know, you really want to look past a pill. And, and do a, consider doing a suppository. If you've never done one before, just consider it and see how it might actually be more beneficial for you, way less expensive, way less time consuming. You put it in before you go to bed, go to bed, you don't even know that it was there when you get up in the morning. It took yeah, you the, the NAD, the NAD suppository is really a, um, a huge breakthrough. Um, I, as far as I know, we have the only NAD suppository that's, that's made. Um, but when you look at the cost and the time that it takes to do an IV, it's just, you know, and we also have it in a liposomal, in an oral version for those people. And, it, and, it's, and it's very well absorbed that way. Liposomals are when they wrap it in like a phospholipid. So it, go, it crosses the gut. So it's another good way, but it, you don't have that slow bleed into the system where the, the cells have time to really absorb it. Almost like a time release essentially is what right. it's, it's like. Yeah. Slowly absorbs into the skin or into the body rather. And I will say, you know, I am up for anything. And I will say that the NAD, the NAD uh, IV, because I've gotten to a point in my life and we had this discussion that I've kind of fallen out of love with, I can't even almost say it, neural therapy a little bit, only because I know what it's doing to the fascia. And I'm like, if it's needed, then put the needle where it needs to go. But if you can do it in a way that's less aggressive, and more allowing of the body, that is definitely the pace the body prefers things. And I, I didn't, I know I remember you mentioning about the suppository NAD. I didn't realize you were the only one with it. And I feel much more in alignment with that than doing an IV. And I've had an IV ready to go for me in South Carolina. This book, I'm going to do it five days in a row is the whole conversation, everything. I keep pushing off. I was supposed to do it in April and then I got pushed off for May. And now I'm like, oh, maybe I'll do it in June. And for this conversation, I'm like, yeah, I don't think I need to do that. I think I'll just do some suppositories and see how it makes me feel and see what it does to my heart rate variability, to my live blood, because that's how we are the lab experiment. But we also find in alignment with us five years ago, I would have been like, eh, don't give me a suppository. I want the IV. I want to feel it all. Now I'm in a different place where I'm like, yeah, I'm good with not feeling it. Let the body get the effects in the slow pace that it wants to get the effects. And I'll just get the uh, optimization and the upgrade. I don't need to feel it. I just am good with getting the upgrade. Mm -hmm. I used to be like, I have to feel it to know it's working. I'm good. I can see it in the quantitative assessments. And that's good enough for me at this point. Mm -hmm. So I, I hope everybody understands that and, and considers looking at the suppositories and trying it out. Um, it doesn't sound like, is what's the side effect of NAD? If there's a negative effect to it, is there one? Yeah, we haven't really seen that except for the, the it does support, you know, those zombie senescent cells, you know, and it, it, it you don't want to be looking at, at creating autophagy 
which is cleaning out those senescent cells along with NAD because it seems to be a bit of a headwind for that. Right, okay. So just a lot of chaos is going on in the body at the same time. Yeah, it's mixed signals. Right, mm -hmm. exactly. You can't- but, like, try, but try the NAD prior to a fast. It's pretty phenomenal. You know, we, 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 we look at kind of lo energetically loading the cells before going into a fast. Um, and that's kind of part of the, the phase one with the mito fast. So we'll have to send you that, that, that kit so you can try it and give me some feedback. I, I would love to do that. Absolutely. And, you know, I would say that there's a lot still here to discuss, but we've taken a lot of your time and, and I appreciate it. And we'll have you back on again, but I, I do want to tie up with one more question I want to ask you, but I want everybody to go back and listen to this, write some notes down, ask us some questions. If you have emails, if you have questions, go ahead and email myself, email Dr. John, we'll get him the information we'll have in the show notes, his websites. He has three different websites. Actually, he has a clinic website, he has a product website, and he has a, um, what was the other website? A clinic website. Oh, the education website. So mitozen.com is the products and i've tried a couple of his other products that you definitely feel his product and then ultimate cellular reset.com is his education so he does a lot of webinars and so forth to educate people about all of the science and microbiology and then advanced rejuvenation.us is his clinic again there in the sarasota area so if you would like to reach out to dr john you can do so if you want to order the product go to mitozen.com use the code, the beats, and you'll get um, a little bit of a discount on that. And the book, which is melatoninbook.com, which I'm very excited to read myself. So you've had a life of rejuvenation and helping not only others, but yourself. And through all of the thousands of people you've helped and the person yourself that you've helped, what has been the one key, if you could say to everybody right now, and you could stand on the rooftops and go, don't miss this missing piece. What's that missing piece? Well, I think that it's important for people to realize that you are creating your reality and mm -hmm. that your intention and what you're putting out is going to come back to you. And you know, meditation I find is, is so helpful for me personally. And, you know, I find that you know, early morning meditations with really just um, putting out into the, into the, you know, into the universe, what you want to come back with emotion can really be life-changing. Totally agree. And, and I, I love having the alignment with you that we've had since the moment we've met. And I appreciate your time today. And I know how busy you are. And I know that it You've only scratched the surface of the knowledge that Dr. John has that we want more information of. And I'm going to start calling him the MM, M and M, the melatonin, melatonin miracle man. guy, the melatonin man, um, the <laughs> melatonin master, because ah. this is a subject that I think so many people, that I, we don't know enough about it. And I appreciate you writing the book and doing the research for us. And that's what this tribe is all about at Not Meds is taking naturally oriented therapists, medically enlightened doctors and specialists, and helping our tribe educate those that want the information and to hook them up together so that we can find those brilliant clients that are ready to engage in their wellness with their brilliant practitioners that are their team members that are helping them accomplish those goals that we work on every single day with the decisions we make, with the things we do, with the things we feed ourselves. And I agree. The very first thing we have to feed ourselves is ourselves and no better time to do that early morning to spend a little time with ourselves and re realign with why we're doing what we're doing and who we are. And mm. awesome. I'm so pleased well to have met you. I'm so pleased to share you with my tribe and to hear about all the reactions, responses that people get from all the melatonin and all the adaptive effects that they get from it and the NAD and everything else. Thank you so much, John, for being here. Beautiful. Thank you, Kelly. And we'll see you next time on The Beats. If this does resonate with you, please do go ahead and share this with your friends, subscribe, and make sure that you leave your comments. We always love to read them. We love to hear what you like and what you're looking for. And that's what we're here for is to make sure you know how your body works from our heart to yours. Have a great day.